Hey, what's up guys? Uh, Panda here and, oh my glass are dirty. Uh, I'm here in the shittiest rental car on the entire island out here in St. Kitts. And today I'm gonna go and see my dad on, the last time we're gonna see him probably here, except for tomorrow when he drops us off. But I'm gonna go see my dad and we're gonna go and do a little interview or something. I don't know, I'm just gonna go and see him. Uh, get some film and uh, ask him some questions because I'm sure he's got some amazing stories and stuff and we're gonna go see what he's got to say Jesus fucking Christ ignore all this ignore all this okay um, okay I'm gonna keep my shades on keep your shades yeah do that yeah I'll be all right. okay so we're here at where are we Port Zanti or Bastier um, yeah Bastier we're in Bastier Bastier we've got over there we've got uh, Nevis Oh, oh, yeah, over there, and we've got St. Kitts here. Uh, we've been here for 12 days now, and sadly going home tomorrow. Here is my father. Hi guys. Here we go. Um, the guy that got me into gaming and computers at quite a young age, and got you into the world as well. Got me into the world somehow. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, sorry about that. No, I think I think I can forgive you for that. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> And we've been out here visiting, and with me and uh, Sam, and it's been, it's been lovely. It's been and great. I really don't want to go home at this point. No, I don't want you to go home. We're going to kidnap you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going on that plane. And no. I just thought that we'd, um, I don't know, we'd do like a little interview, or if my dad's got some amazing stories. He's had a full, exciting life full of crazy shit, and I'm sure a lot of it you've not told me because it's, I was younger, maybe. Um, and I just thought if you wanted to, you know. If you had something in mind you have come up with that you want to... <laughs> something, 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 <laughs> something, yes, you see the trouble is when you have, when you have a kid, it's, you, you, you want them to do what you say and not what you do, you see, so you don't want to, you know, them to copy your example, so I've done lots of things that I wouldn't recommend anybody else do. Of course. But it's just, you know, I, I had a different situation. I, I was told by my doctors at, at the age of 13, I might not make the age of 20. So, um, the whole of the 60s was, was kind of, you know, I wonder if I could do that. I wonder if, how many drugs I could, I wonder how much acid I could, I wonder, you know, it's, because you were to die anyway, Yeah. there was no problem. I hasten out, I'm not, I'm over 20 now. Just a little bit over Quite 20. Quite a bit over 20. All right, I'm 67, okay. Okay. Now it your way. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm, always amazed by each birthday uh, so yeah it's been it's been it's been strange and, and you kind of you know, once you get into the groove of just you know doing stuff you just carry on like that so I did I'm still well I've calmed down a bit now <laughs> I've calmed down a bit now but it's um, it's been interesting it's been a ride yeah it's been a ride so anything in any of these uh, specific do I teach not what I do moments that uh, that you've never really shared that you wouldn't mind sharing? I mean, you could literally go as as hard as you want with whatever you want. Yeah, yeah I yeah. don't think the this police is, are coming yeah, out here to. This is this is a blackmail video, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm just going to tuck this away. This is a blackmail video, and um, uh, um, I, look, nothing actually springs to mind. I mean, I just you know. Uh, I can remember, you know, age of 16, my, my parents didn't know I was smoked and smoked dope and stuff like that, and I, I, I had a 15th birthday party and uh, all these, I, I invited, because I didn't know anybody in, in London, mm -hmm. my sister went to school there, and I had the, her school photograph, so I said, I want to invite her, <laughs> her, and her, and her, and she said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll take, I'll take this, so these little envelopes that I sent out, and, and I didn't expect them to come. And I, I was all blokes from my school was 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 the worst of it. They all turned up. Unfortunately, they all turned up with their boyfriends, <laughs> who were you know very good looking, eighteen year old guys, with long hair, and uh, obviously a lot more life experience than me at fifteen. Um, but somehow they they liked me, and uh, so I got invited to go up to uh, what's called the, what's called the hot coffee cup. Actually, it's still there in Hampstead High Street. And you, we'd meet up there every Saturday night and get a list of parties to go and crash. Uh, so we also used to get in this Jeep, open-air Jeep, an army Jeep, they're not like the modern, nice, comfortable Jeeps. Mm -hmm. 
and um, we used to go off and uh, three or four of us would go off on a different list we'd all meet up at a certain place and say that party was good there's no no girls there there's no drink there there's no drugs there and we all at, turn up at the, at the best party and, and finish the night there that sounds That's fun pretty bad isn't it pretty bad that sounds pretty that was awesome pretty <laughs> awesome i'm pretty sure everyone listening to this right now would say hey I need to do the exactly right that with my life right now. But you know, it's it's illegal. I mean, you know, it's, you shouldn't be doing that sort of thing. <clears throat> you shouldn't be doing that sort of thing. Oh, um, thank you, Father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was my introduction, really, to, to 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 living, and I got expelled from school the next year because you know, school was boring, and I was having more fun out of school, and. Um, yeah, I started photography when I was 17, completely by accident. Uh, I love that story. My parents were pissed off with me hanging around the house, smoking dope, gambling and having fun. And uh, they said, you've got to do something. I said, well, nothing I want to do. And they said, well, what would it be if you, you know, were going to do something? And I thought, ah, uh, photography. And they said, oh, I've got a friend who's a photographer. Cool, speak to him. So I spoke to him one evening and he gave me the list of studios I could go and visit. I promised him absolutely faithfully I wouldn't turn up there without an appointment. And I wrote them down. And one was on the on the bus route. There's a there's a number sixteen bus route that went to all the way to my old school and um, it stopped at Hyde, Hyde Park, just by the Hilton Hotel in Park Lane. And I could walk through it. So I thought, well I'll just go see how long it takes me to get to the studio. So I walked off and I went to the Shepherd's Market where it used to be a place where prostitutes used to hang out and so that was kind of, it, that was kind of interesting. Went down this ramp and there's nobody around all these garages and stuff and these little metal staircase at the end, Studio 5 and I thought well I'm not going to go in, I'm just going to have a look. So I crept up the steps and just looked over the top of the step and uh, this voice said Come on in, don't worry. I said, no, no, not me, not me. No, I'm sorry, I, 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 I promised I wouldn't do this. <laughs> She's having come out of the job in the Evening Standard. No, 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 no. I'm, I, I was just um, passing and I just, you know, I'm just going home now. Thank you, bye-bye. Oh, no, please come in. And she came and got my arm and, and dragged me up the steps and sat me down in the reception and said, maybe we'll see, we'll see you in a minute. And I went, look, I promised I wouldn't do this. This is, yeah. Anyway, so I was called into the boss's study or his office or wherever it was and he had his feet up on the desk and he said have you got any experience in photography I went mm -mm. he said have you got a camera I said oh yeah you have had a camera since I was 12 okay you like photography said, yeah he said where do you go to school Westminster he said oh so did I okay start on Monday and that was it and I walked down back down the hall completely dazed and the and the receptionist Lorna said to me oh darling you didn't get the job I said I did I got it I got it and I walked all the way home. I couldn't. I couldn't believe I got it. And um, tell my parents I got. I got the first job. Five pounds a week. A lot of money in those days, but um, wouldn't go very far now. What did the? What did uh, your parents say about it? Were they ecstatic that you'd gone out and said, well, "Oh, he's gone and got a job straight away." <laughs> they were impressed. I have yeah. to say they were impressed. So uh, you know. Cool. I, I never. I never told the guy that I, I hadn't made the appointment, and it was a job in the Evening Standard, and it was just you know up, up for grabs. So I didn't have to make an appointment. So yes, and I started and I was just, you know, thrown into this whole different world of of, of about ten photographers who worked out the place and all different personalities, different types of people. I was working in the dark rooms, you know, all the chemicals and mm. you have to start and sweeping the floors and cleaning the toilets and stuff like that in those days and um, that's how I started, yeah. With, oh, look, pelican. Didn't let, me, didn't let me touch a, a camera for the first year I was out there. Oh well. Wow. And then I got very well with one of the photographers there and he wanted me to work for him and he said, I'll give you five pounds a day. I went, five pounds a week, five pounds a day, <laughs> five pounds. What I didn't realize was it wasn't be five pounds a day every day. It's only when he was working. Right. But anyway, it's, um, yeah, we drove around this little blacked out mini with a, he had a matte paint job, which is Ooh. way before it's time, way before it's time. And um, we used to pick up girls and take them to the studio and have fun and take photographs of them. Sorry, I'm not just... Yeah, I'm doing, looking at him. He's just, huge. Just, whoa, sailing around. 
having the time of his life. I want, I want, I want to do that. Look, 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 just a couple of, couple of flaps and off he goes again. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so that's how it all started. It was all completely by accident. Completely by accident. And then you went on to be quite a well-known photographer. No, photographer, Bastard. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I, I had my 15 minutes of fame in the uh, 70s and 80s, doing lots of record covers and... Uh, what was the pinnacle of your of your fame, if you had to... I was after I did the, the, the Pretenders record cover and The Who, mm -hmm. uh, and The Stray Cats, those three I did very soon after each other, and people would come up to me at gigs and say, are you Gavin Cochran? And they're, oh, please can I shake your hand? And, oh. Whoa, <laughs> this is a bit weird. It sounds a bit extreme, yeah. This is a bit weird. I'm a bit stoned at the moment, but yeah. Another, <laughs> another time, maybe. <laughs> and of course, you know, women just loved it all, so that was easy. Mm. Too easy, probably, yes. Anyway. Um, and then you and mentioned then... you met my mum somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I met your mum. Actually, your, your mum. Your ladies. mum helped me. I met her in a club, actually. Uh -huh. uh, in a speakeasy very famous London club and uh, your mum helped me with my first record cover oh yeah so yeah my first sort of commissioned record cover I'd done one before of a guy called Roy Harper um, and it was from a guy, band called Sparks which uh, just appeared now thankfully and she helped me with yeah she helped me with the whole whole job and then she went back to Edinburgh huh. and uh, I, I was I thought I want to go up and see her so I, I got on the bus and went up to Edinburgh and just Awful, ten hours on this bus. Oh, the bus to Edinburgh, Jesus yeah, Christ. Jesus. Uh, well, that's... That was dedication. That right? is dedication, yeah. With my bone problems, yep, but dedication. She knew you were coming? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. didn't just turn up. No, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't just turn up. No, no. Yeah. Although I do have a romantic story, and it's really how you were born. Your mum and I split up, she left me. Um, much for the same reasons that, 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 that your current girlfriend might leave you if you don't smarten up your act and, and start helping in the house and yeah. tidying up a bit. Mm -hmm. She said, I just can't cope with just having to deal with all the housework and, and you and, and just picking up all your stuff and you're so untidy and blah, 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 blah. Um, that sounds familiar. I'm going to Ibiza for, for a couple of weeks just to just chill out. And she went there and met Gunter, who's a German guy, and um, she then she called me up and said, I'm not coming back. I was, really? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> You're kidding me. And um, yes, so I went off to Australia. Um, anyway, I had a few adventures there, I won't go into them though. Um, came back to England, my girlfriend from Australia came to visit me, realised that it wasn't going to happen, and uh, took her to the airport to go to visit her ex husband in Jersey, and uh, went to the desk and said look when's the next plane to, to Ibiza put my American Express card down and, and they gave me a ticket and I got on the plane no nothing didn't even have a bag with me nothing wow and I knew sooner or later your mum would come to there's a main what they call plaza a, 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 a square in, mm -hmm. in Ibiza old Ibiza town and I waited there and I saw her well, miles away. I could just, I just knew her body language. You know, she got closer and closer and closer and closer. She sat. She was chatting to a girlfriend. Chat, 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 chat. She got to about here. I went, "Hi, how are you doing?" She went, "Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you doing here?" <laughs> and oh, that was that didn't go very well. <laughs> I thought it was very romantic and lovely, and you know, it didn't. It was romantic. Yeah, it didn't go too well. Anyway, so I went home empty-handed and uh, you just went straight home well you know she didn't want to see me and she was with Gunter who had this bus and he was at motorbikes and yeah. you know he was rich German um and then I don't know, I don't know, a couple of months later she came back but you know by this time I'd, I'd had a, a lot of fun and um I just realized you know there were still some people who quite fancied me which was nice and um then she came back and I don't know we ended up in bed and Woke up in the morning and I said, um, shall we? And she knew exactly what I meant and called her father and uh, I asked him and she, said, she he said, yes, I, I would we'd love you to get married. So we got married. That's a lovely story. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. really nice. So if I hadn't gone to Ibiza, I don't think you'd be here. 
Well, you might be here in a different form, but you know. Yeah. In the current form. That's a weird one. I, I, I didn't know I was going to tell you that story. No, it's fine. It's fascinating. That's a weird one, isn't it? <coughs> right. <sighs> Do you want to have a break? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>